74 was the last TV perfect game by Jim Stefanich out in California. Jim also a fine golfer. He might do a little damage in that skins game if he was in there. He's a, he's a little better than scratch. <laughs> of course, you know, against guys like that, it's a little tough. Dave Ferraro has a chance to add his name to that list of perfect games on television. Only three in all the years that professional bowling has been televised. All right, that is six in a row for Ferraro. It's too bad uh, since they're giving 100000 you don't get 50 of it for the first half, Jay. What do you think? <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Doesn't Earl. work that way. No, sir. <laughs> Ferraro up by 56. Or 58. The scoreboard says 56, but he's up by 58. A little wide with that one, Jay. Didn't get it back. Yes, uh... Problem in the seventh, just as Gant had the problem with his seventh pin in the seventh uh, in his last game. Ferraro comes to the seventh and doesn't get them all. Now, I'll tell you what, it may look like Dave Ferraro is in a very, he is in a very commanding position in the championship match, but as I mentioned before, John Gant can throw a lot of strikes. You saw that in his first match. Still can shoot 232. Ferraro has to make this fair, and he can't get careless. Anything can happen. A lot of frames left. Dave finished seventh in last week's Brunswick Memorial World Open. Mentioned that Gant will, with his play this week, move ahead of Dave Husted. You see, he was just behind Husted coming into this week, but now he's going to go to the number one spot. Husted has been nursing the flu all week. A strike for Gant, and he's still very much in it. Gant was voted in 84 the Sporting News PBA Rookie of the Year. And he won his only title that year. Current earnings of better than $60,000. Better than 140 in his career. And Gant comes back. Battling back with strikes in the 7th and 8th. His young son applauding there, and now it's back on the shoulders of Dave Ferraro, who qualified first. Dave, 5'8", 160 pounds. He says he's got his speech ready, though, Chuck. Ferraro's impressed me with his concentration and coolness today. He's amazing under pressure. Uh, he's bowled extremely well in this championship match. And you mentioned earlier, Jay, he's had a little television experience, but not a great deal. He lost that 279 to 278 match to Mark Baker. Maybe that's what made him tough. Losing a game like that, he figures, that's as good as I can do. What are you going to do? I'll do it again. You try to beat me. <laughs> Should be 45, right? thought sure that that was going to be a little better than all he has was. to do is stay out of trouble Jay and that's an easy spare for Dave Ferraro at this point and even though he'd like to get the strike uh, if he just gets his spare and another spare in the 10th frame he's going to be a winner but he still has another frame to go to stay clean the 10th frame Started things out with six in a row. Then a spare in the seventh, strike in the eighth, spare in the eighth, and now Gant. Strikes in the seventh and eighth here in the all important ninth. Hit him thin, watch him spin, Jay. A lot of power there, strength. A lot of revolutions on the ball. That's what makes those pins dance like that. The skins game is coming up next. Gant is down by 32 pins. And he needs to go all the way 
He does. He can get the match to within 12 pins with two strikes in the 10th, actually three in the 10th. And then it'll be up to Dave Ferraro to get a mark to win the tournament. See how quickly he can turn around in the sport of bowling. Look at this. He got oh, it. wait. And a big sigh from Big John. All right, he's still, he's still in a match. Two more strikes. He'll cut the lead to 12 pins. Dave Ferraro sitting there thinking, what do you have to do to beat this guy? What a crusher. Ooh, the seven pin. That's about the only thing that seems to be able to stop John Gant is that dead flush seven pin. He threw it extremely well. He knew he needed it. Sigh of relief by Dave mm -hmm. Ferraro. All he has to do is stay behind the foul line, keep the ball in the lane, and he's a winner. Gant with a total of 221. Ferraro needs five pins. And he gets the strike, and somebody said, Welcome to the Firestone, Davy. And right. his wife applauds, and a very big win for Dave Ferraro. His first PBA title and the $27,000 first prize, and we'll watch him finish it off here. He got, got another strike with a dead hit off the, on the head pin. He was just trying to throw it down the middle and get it over with. He's a winner. He knew it. He's just really had this. What a thrill for a young man like this. We've had a lot of this this fall, Jay. First-time winners in George Branham last week. who won the World Open. And it's just been such an exciting fall tour. It's been great. Well, the victory for Dave Ferraro, 27-year-old native of Kingston, New York. His wife with a great big hug. Happiness all around for the Ferraros. We'll be back and pass out the prizes. When we return to the Budweiser Bowling Classic right after... Morrow ...from Kingston, New York. Here he is. And alongside, of course, is Mr. Tom Tramsky of Anheuser-Busch. First of all, from all of us at NBC Sports. And, of course, we have a special association this year with Bud Sports producing these fall tour events. Our congratulations to Anheuser-Busch and all your people for a wonderful week here. Thank you, Jay. I think uh, the people of Columbus have been so enthused over this tournament. You know, uh, they talk about bowl country around Columbus. This is bowling country, too, and well, I think is. today proves that. Well, and good luck to Ohio State, certainly. You bet. <laughs> Dave, uh, this beautiful bowling ball with the Anheuser-Busch insignia on top, I guess we could say this ball's for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is a dream, dream come through. Dave, I'll tell you, and Gloria, uh, I understand this is your first win, yes. and we're so pleased with Budweiser to be able to pay you that $27,000. You know, this trophy is one good thing, but I think that $27,000 check is going to be enjoyed, right? Yes. <laughs> you, why don't we get to the check? George Hadler, I think we can all see this check, can't we? George, bring this in and make the presentation. Dave, uh, we're glad to have you in Columbus, Ohio. Congratulations. You did a beautiful job. Looking forward to having you back next year. And we want to present you with this modest-sized check here. <laughs> Take it home and good health. Hand it right over there. All right. Thank you, Tom. Why don't you get over here and let me move in and talk things over with Dave. I mentioned earlier on the telecast, of course, that this has to be special for you. The first victory is always very special. And, of course, you have grown up in the sport, and your family, uh, three generations, have been involved in it. So what are your thoughts today? Well, uh, see, this is a great moment for me, and I'm sure my family and my wife. And I'd like to thank the Hadler family for sponsoring the tournament and uh, Phil Ruzzo for having us here. He's been a great host, and thank you all for coming. I thought today that we might have an all-Italian final here. Were you rooting for that? Yeah, it was close. Em Little had a shot last night, and if he won the last game, he would have been here, too. That's right. And, uh, of course, I think probably uh, the item that Earl and I talked about today was that you seem to come right out, 